Hey guys, here are some of the books I've been reading for research, and since it's summer now, I got some time, so I figured I'd give you a quick review of some of them. Anyway, let's get started with the only, I guess it's fiction, one on here, which would be Inferno. Uh, my last video was about movies that had Illuminati themes like X-Men, and Inferno is another one that's coming out. This one seems pretty crazy because uh, it's about the Agenda 21 and where they're trying to eliminate a bunch of people. And I don't want to give too much away just in case people want to read it for themselves, but basically it's about this guy who creates a plague and he's trying to, you know, wipe out humanity for the good of everybody because he theorizes that humans are nothing more than parasites and they're just using up all the resources and it's just crazy and it just fits in with Agenda 21 pretty good so let me see if I can find any interesting parts without giving too much away um... I guess I should have pre-selected some pages with interesting information in it Here's something I had highlighted. Oh, here he's talking about how the plague was one of the best things to happen to Europe because uh, after the plague, the economy was booming. They had a lot more food, obviously, because two-thirds of the population was wiped out. Um, they had more food, they had more jobs, they had more trades, and, you know, just things like that. Look at that. And he's saying how that's a good thing for at least the economy and for people. Yeah, I should have. See, I read everything and I got all these tabs in it, but I don't really have any specific pages. And since it's on my camera, we got to do it one handed here. Um. Oh, here's here they are talking about the population doubling. So they keep theorizing that the the population is going to grow exponentially so and that there's just not enough resources on the planet for humanity to you know survive that it's like hum they consider humanity is going to eat itself to death like we're going to use up all the wood all the oil all the food all of everything we're going to kill and hunt all the animals overfish the seas and it's not too far off because a lot of people in the UN theorize that we're doing that right now so anyway, here's just a couple of brief pages in the book. Here's chapter 33 in Inferno. And here they are talking about a mathematical equation that was developed that is based off a global collapse due to overpopulation. And the, like I said, these are all things that the UN is discussing. And that's why Agenda 21 is a thing. They want to eliminate a bunch of people to... Uh, what, what's it called? The sustainability agenda. I, I was learning about it in school. This stuff ain't a joke. Okay, here's another interesting section in Inferno where he's talking about the Council on Foreign Relations. And uh, many conspiracy theorists have linked them to, you know, things like the Bilderberg Group. And they think that they're the think tank responsible behind things like Agenda 21 and, uh, what do you call them, stones? The Georgia Guidestones. This section is just more about talk about the plagues and how it's just a natural way for the planet to purge itself from, you know, too many people taking stuff from. Okay, this is a book I've been waiting for for a while by Manly P. Hall. And it basically outlines the New World Order and the history of it, how it goes back much further than, you know, whenever George Bush was talking about it in, you know, the early 90s. Uh, he's theorizing that it's been a plan throughout the ages, you know, since ancient Egypt, and I'd agree, not only based on his evidence, but some of my own independent research, and it says right on the back about Christopher Columbus being an agent of, I think he thinks it was the Knights Templar, and many other authors agree with that, and that Columbus was just coming here to that they already knew about it, like Rosalind Chapel has a bunch of Templar, uh, more than a bunch, it was completely built by the Templars and the Sinclair family, and anyway, 
they theorized that the Knights Templar and many other uh, races knew about America before Columbus was credited with it. And the Templars flew here when they were purged back in, what was it, 1307 from the French king during Black Friday, you know, the whole burning of the Templars thing. So they allegedly fled to the New World and Scotland, and they teamed up with, what's his face? Somebody, Richard the Bruce, Robert the Bruce, and the Battle of Bannockburn. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the plan, uh, interesting things in this book. Okay, here we go. The very first chapter, he's talking about how the ancient civilizations knew about the New World, and they wanted that to be the site of their New Atlantis and the One World Government and all that. Okay, here's Secret Destiny of America, and here they're talking about the book New Atlantis by Francis Bacon, and um, they're saying that it told too much, that the New World Order was completely laid out in symbolic form in that book, and... Um, that all the Masons and the Templars, they considered Atlantis to be the one world utopia, like the golden age that they wanted. And that's what they're trying to restore. They're, they're trying to make the claim that the Illuminati and the Templars and Rosicrucians and all these societies, that they're trying to bring democracy to the world and they're the good guys and all this other stuff. And that they're battling the evil church who's held mankind in slavery for eons with religious dogmas and superstitions, when they're doing the exact same thing, just with different ideals, like science and alchemy and wizard. Okay, here's more of America's Secret Destiny. Here Manley Hall's talking about how the Greeks and the ancient Egyptians, and it looks like the Chinese knew about ancient America. And uh, if you really research this stuff, you'll notice that these ancient Egyptian mummies had cocaine in them, which is strange because they said that that plant is only available in the uh, what would East Western world. So you know, there's a little bit of proof. It could be circumstantial. It all depends. But like I said, you might want to investigate Rosalind Chapel and things in there were have said to contain images from the New World, like eucalyptus leaves and certain varieties of maize that weren't known until the New World. Here Manly P. Hall is talking a little bit about the ancients and the constellations. And it looks like a little bit of, uh, what do you call that, sacred geometry where all the latitude lines are certain Masonic angles and things like that, like 33 degrees. They got a bunch of temples like Stonehenge and some people theorize that they're gateways or stargates. You know, there's all kinds of rumors and theories and it's just pretty interesting stuff. Okay, this looks like he's talking about how man can become God, or become a superior man once he's enlightened. Uh, and that's just the whole gist of this book, that all these enlightened thinkers, that they're trying to do us a favor and create a one-world government where we're not enslaved to religion or anything like that. We're just enslaved to the bankers, which is funny because the banking system originated with the Templars. Okay, moving right along, we got Edward Bernays's Propaganda. And if you don't know, Edward Bernays is, I think he was the nephew of Sigmund Freud. And this book was pretty interesting because it details a lot of how easy it is to manipulate, you know, the mass opinion of the public. This is the very first page in Propaganda, and he's talking about the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and, in, and opinions of the masses. Here he's talking about the invisible rulers who manipulate this unseen mechanism of propaganda. And he says, just flat out, we're governed, our minds are molded, and our tastes are formed. Ideas are suggested by people we don't even know or ever even heard of. And that's by design. I mean, they put puppets in place, like presidents, but the presidents controlled by, not the bankers directly, but the the large corporations who have all the money, the oil industry like the Rockefellers, the banking industry like the Morgans and Rothschilds, and you know, just the technological industry like Bill Gates. You think when um, politicians aren't lobbying that the candidates that they want, they're not fully funded by these guys like Monsanto and all that? Give me a break. Okay, here he's discussing the invisible government. Uh, it's concentrated in the hands of the people with the money because of the great expenses. 
And um, I got this book because of subliminal advertising, but it's not really quite about that, but it does give great examples about how propaganda is used to convince people to wear certain fashion lines and stuff. And they do it by, you know, getting people in charge and authority, like presidents and politicians. They get them to sway their opinion. Celebrities like music and um, movie actors, they're really important. And they said if they want to get people to eat more bacon, then they're going to make a deal with doctors to say, oh, you've got to eat more bacon because it's more healthy for you and it'll promote muscle growth or some bullcrap. And it doesn't matter what the truth is. As long as a doctor says it, millions of Americans will eat bacon just because they think the doctor knows better, even though there's plenty of contradictory evidence. Okay, I was at the bookstore and I was looking for something else and this just so happened to be on the shelf. And I couldn't resist getting it. And anyway, it's rather new. I got it a few months ago, and it's only less than 20 bucks. And uh, this one is quite important. And I thought it'd be some boring, long-winded political drivel, but he's actually a pretty good author. And there are many examples of how they want to create a new world order. But if you're looking for proof that says that they're conspiring in the shadows, you're never going to find it, at least not in here. Here, it's a bunch of examples about the old world orders and just how they failed to survive as an empire. I found this section in the world order book interesting. Anyway, a pope is basically stating that there's two sections of order, and one used to be the priest and the Pharisees, and the real world order was in a sense not in this world, like the invisible rulers and whatnot. Kissinger mentions international order multiple times in this book. I don't even know how many. And I think that's just a subliminal way of conditioning us for the fact that they do want their international one world order soon. Okay, this section of the world order book was really interesting because he was mentioning how the fact that all the ancient rulers claim that they ruled by divine right especially like all the ancient Egyptian empires, like they claim that they were god kings, especially in China as well. And since the people thought they were gods, they had no choice but to serve them, and basically that's how humanity has been basically indentured servants since the dawn of time. You know, all these books are important for any of this type of research into the New World Order, or the Illuminati, or whatever you want to call it. And that's, there's a reason why I got all of them. And here's just more information. Here's Caesar Alexander of Russia talking about how he's another divine ruler and whatnot, how he's using the name of God to conquer the world in his name. And this just reminded me of, what was his name, Constantinople? When he said he saw the sign of the cross in the sky and he decided to take up uh, a holy crusade, if you will, and, and all in the name of Jesus Christ, but in reality it was under his sun god Helios. Okay, here Kissinger's talking about the Treaty of Versailles and its failures, and here he's talking about imperialistic nations. We're learning that the League of Nations was an utter failure, and they basically, there was no punishment for doing whatever you wanted. And basically, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of this book highlighted, and there's multiple markers. And I mean, it's only a, what, 400-page book, it looks like. So, like I said, you should definitely check this book out if you're into the New World Order research. And I think we're going to wrap it up here because of copyright issues.